Hey everybody, this is Kathy McPherson um, from the Center for E-Learning. I'm up at the Jupiter campus today. Uh, really glad to have everybody here today. We are um, talking today about accessibility in your online course. Okay, we're working with a um, tool called WebEx, which works really well in Canvas. It's a great tool for you to be able to invite your students into synchronous chat sessions. Um, we're still working out some of the some of the kinks with it. And uh, what I want you to know is that at the Center for E-Learning in this professional development um, environment, we're using we're using this uh, tool, the Event Center. I don't like that pointer. We're using the Event Center because this gives us the highest level of control. We're needing folks to sign in uh, to register when when you come in because we're opening this up to everyone in the state and actually everyone in the world. You can invite anybody you want in. Um, and so we want to see who's here. So that's why we put in the uh, registration piece. But you don't need this kind of control when you're using it in your own uh, course or working with one-on-one -on -one people. Um, working one-on-one -on -one with people, you can use the training center or the meeting center, which are appropriate for different um, levels of control in different groups of people. In WebEx events, the moderator and the host communicates with um, everyone else via chat. And um, our host today is Jade, so we're real happy to have her on board today. Um, I am Jade, I am not able to actually see the chat. If there's a way that I can do that, um, I'd appreciate if you kind of jump in and tell me how to do that. Presenters, that's one of me, that's I'm the presenter, and I don't know if we have anybody else on board today who's presenting or has the um, presenter role, but um, anybody who's presenting can speak freely or share their own screen. And then participants are all of you folks who are watching. Um, you can chat with each other. You can, I don't think you can chat with each other, but um, you can chat with the host, with Jade. And um, if you want to say something, you have your microphone on, um, go ahead and let her know that you want to do that. She will unmute you and invite you to speak. Um, this is an interactive session in that we really want folks to give a shout out, ask a question, uh, participate in any way that you want to. Should be in the top right in blue. Okay. Ah, there it is. Thanks, Jade. Appreciate it. So let's get into our topic. Um, our topic today is web accessibility. This is a huge topic. It's a broad ranging. Um, it changes really, really fast. And um, it's relatively new. I mean, we can, we can, um, most of us can remember a time when the internet did not exist. And so, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a really is a new topic and it changes all the time. We're going to be heading into um, virtual reality. There's gaming, there's all kinds of things. You know, how do you make a 3D video accessible? We don't, you know, I'm sure that there are folks who know, but I am not one of those people. Um, our role today is that just we're sharing. This is a community of practice where we share what we know, we ask each other questions, and um, you know we just get this dialogue going. Um, as for my credentials, um, I'm an instructional designer with FAU Center for E-Learning. I'm also a state licensed professional educator. I have some training experience, especially with Quality Matters, but I'm not an expert in web accessibility, and I don't think that there's probably too many joining us today who are. Um, even if one could call himself call themselves an expert, there's always new stuff happening. There's always new things to learn. And so I think what I really want to say at the beginning of this is that if you feel like this is overwhelming for you, that's okay. Just take a step back, and um, you know we're just going to take it one step at a time and work on it together. Um, okay, our goal at this point is to make our online courses as accessible as possible to all of our students, to all of our participants. Um, the major categories of disability types that we're going to address um, are 
visual, which includes blindness, low vision, co color blindness. Um, so it's not just people who are blind, it's people who, a lot of people are colorblind, a lot of people um, like me have to wear reading glasses as we get a little older. And uh, these are all, all things that we need to take into consideration when we're designing our online courses. There are folks um, hearing, hearing is another disability type. And we're not just talking about people who are totally deaf, it's different levels of hearing loss. Um, we're also we're talking about people who have the inability, motor disabilities, inability to use a mouse, the slow response time, limited fine motor control, which can be temporary and it can also be permanent. Um, and then we've got cognitive disabilities, learning disabilities, um, distractibility, ADD is a huge thing. Um, inability to remember or focus on large amounts of information. Um, this kind of, when you look at the statistics, it kind of incorporates all of us in some way or another. So I don't want to think about this in terms of, I don't want us to think about this in terms of just people with severe disabilities. There's um, English language learners. There's folks who learn better through auditory or learn better through visual, all of these kinds of things. And the more accessible that we can make um, our course content, the more inclusive it is. And it's just a better teaching, okay? There's a really wonderful resource um, with web accessibility perspectives videos. I wanna just click on that for a minute and take us there. These videos really help us to see all of what we're talking about today from the user's perspective. Um, and it's okay to use, W3C gave, gives permission as long as we share the links. And um, there's videos on every, every topic that you could wanna see. So real, real excited to share that one. I'm gonna be sharing quite a few resources today, but don't worry. I'll send you uh, the links for everything afterward. Okay, another important reason to discuss this is that it's the law. Um, you've probably heard of the Americans with Disabilities Act um, 2008. You've probably heard of the Rehabilitation Act 1973 and especially Section 504, where any federal um, organization, which includes public schools, state schools, we are required to make all online or make all of our learning content accessible and even physical buildings and things like that accessible to all people. Um, you might not have heard about Section 508, which is the section that relates to information communication technology. Um, these standards were revised so that, I'm gonna go ahead and read this because I wanna make sure that I get it right. As of January 18th, 2018, which is two weeks ago, last week, federal agencies, which is us, FAU and other public schools, um, federal agencies must comply with the revised standards uh, so that information and communication technology any of that that's developed, maintained, or used by federal agencies must satisfy the updated scoping and technical requirements in the standards. Um, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. The revised standards, um, they incorporate specific references it specifically references the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.0, which um, was put out by W3C. So what's W3C? W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium. It's an international community where member organizations, a full-time staff, and the public, they work together to develop web standards. Um, these are the guys that offer the best uh, HTML tutorials, um, web code writing tutorials and things. 
Um, they're pretty much the, the big daddies of, of the internet. Um, they have written the guidelines, a substantial amount of the W2, um, WCAG 2.0 support material is available, all this stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And this is gonna seem overwhelming, but really we're taking, we've gotta take it one step at a time. Um, okay, this is the Web Accessibility Initiative. And okay, this gives us everything you wanna know about the guidelines and more, um, how to get started. This is the basics. And then we get down into the actual guidelines and how to meet them. Okay, there's is so much information in here, way, way too much information for us to get into today. Okay. Um, but it's important to have it so you know where we're getting it, how you can get it, tons of resources. Okay. So actually, before I get started on that, do we have any sort of questions or comments at this point? We're going to get into, in a minute, some specifics about how to, how to do, how to make the courses um, accessible, but I'd sure like to hear from anybody who wants to say something. No? Okay. If you're having any technical trouble, if you're having, um, if you feel like you want to share, but you don't know how, go ahead and, and chat in with Jade and she'll help you out. Okay. All right. And if you feel like I missed something, please jump in and let me know. Oh, I did actually miss something. Okay. One of the things about the law is um, organizations are getting sued. People who have Disabilities are starting to speak up and say, hey, this is the law. You guys need to follow the, the guidelines. And if you don't, you know, they are actually suing. So that is another reason for us to go ahead and do it. Besides, it's just the right thing to do. Okay, so principle one set out by the guidelines um, deals with perceivable web content. If you have an online course, your content, your content is internet based. So this does apply to us. I want to start with this because it's one of the easiest things for us to do. Um, it does take an extra step, but it's an important one. So if you're doing pre-recorded online uh, videos or audio podcasts and things like that, I really recommend, we really recommend that you go ahead and write out a script as, before you record it. It, it'll help you with uh, your post-production editing, um, and it's really good for your students as well. You can edit uh, YouTube videos. YouTube puts up automatic captioning, but if you notice, it's done by a computer, so it's not necessarily, it doesn't get the words necessarily right, but they have made it possible now for us to edit even videos that had, um, automatically generated captioning. So that's kind of cool. Especially the ones that do belong to you, you can absolutely do that. And um, I'm not gonna go into how to do it right now. It's very, very Googleable, And um, it's, it's getting easier all the time. Okay. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, non-text content. If you have um, pictures, it's important to have alternative text and descriptions. The reason that we need to do these to, to do this is that um, screen readers and other um, um, uh, what do we call it? Assistive technologies, screen readers and other assistive technologies. They are machines, and they they follow the text that's on the screen, and they do it using the code. So a computer can't tell me what this image is, but um, if I tell it what it is, it'll know. So what we do is we put in alternative text, whoops, 
and descriptions. Okay, going to exit full screen here. And I'm going to stop presenting for just a minute on this and show you how, especially like in Google Docs, Google Drive, you can do it. Um, all you do is you hover over the image, right click, and then Alt Text. If you're using your dashboard, it's a Control Alt Y. And then the title, yeah, that can be helpful, but the main thing is the description. You're really just describing what what is the picture. If I'm looking at it, what am I looking at? And that's it. Okay. Um, this every image needs all text. Okay. All right. And in Google Drive, I have my. Okay. So that's super important. How to do it in Canvas. Canvas is great this way. Let me pull up my Canvas course here. Okay, this here is an image. And if you notice when you when you work work on your images, whoops, this isn't this image does not describe what I'm looking at. So I'll just put up here welcome banner. Okay. And I have a choice of whether I want to tell the computer whether this is just a decorative image. It's not necessary for the screen reader to read it or not. And I can click update. And then Canvas also has this wonderful accessibility checker where I can check my page. Yay, no accessibility issues were detected. Good for me. Yay. And that's really all it is in Canvas. Um, Microsoft, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a couple of minutes. Okay, principle two, adaptable. Content needs to be created that can be presented in different ways. For example, or in simpler layout without losing the information or the structure. Uh, some of the ways to do this are to have logical information um, and relationships between what we're seeing and what's being shown. Um, and meaningful sequences. I'm going to show you exactly what that means in just a second. Captions is probably the most logical here. If I have a picture, uh, what's the caption that goes with it? All right, I'm going to demonstrate, unless anybody has a, a quick question or anything that you want to need me to address, you're good? Okay. I'm a little bit worried because I'm afraid you guys are uh, lost or whatever. Okay, so checking a Word document. Uh, let me go ahead and pull this up here. <laughs> okay. So here is a Word document that I created specifically for this event. And you'll see here the accessibility checker. I'll show you in a couple of minutes how to put that onto your PowerPoint or onto your Office ribbon. Every Microsoft Office tool now has this accessibility checker. Click it and it automatically shows what the errors are. So it tells me now there's missing alt text on picture number one here. Okay, so this needs a needs all text. All right, how do I fix it? I'm going to right click it. And let's see format picture. And then you get all these great choices here. Let's see layout. There it is Alt text. Now this if I was using a screen reader, it shows me where I got it from where where the image came from, but it doesn't help at all with what the image is. So I'll just describe it. Goal setting, target with arrows. And um, I can put this in as a title here. Okay. And we're 
good to go. Now when I hover over this, it should say title with arrows. No, it doesn't. That's okay. All right, unclear hypertext link. Okay, now one of the other standards is you want to make it readable for the screen reader. A screen reader, if you look it up in the videos, will literally say out everything that it sees on the document. And this is, if if I have to listen to this, it's really painful for me. I have ADD, I don't want to listen to HTTPS slash, right? Horrible. So what we do is we take this, we control X, cut, and link it here, highlight, um, insert, hyperlink, control V. Hopefully everybody knows how to put a link into words, but what you need to notice is that these words are descriptive of what the link leads to. They don't want us using the words click here. They don't want us to use, um, you know, click. They really want us to, to show what it is we're going to. So this leads to the W3C intellectual rights frequently asked questions page. And that's exactly the words that I'm going to link it to. Okay. Objects not in line. All right. It wants me to do in line. Now this is a, this is a style choice. If I don't want to do that, I don't have to, but um, it's letting me know. Okay. Repeated blank characters. This one is so 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 important and it's real simple and i think that a lot of people just don't know it um instead of spacing over you can use your styles okay and i'm sorry if this is basic but i see a lot of people not using it either center it on the page or tab it over and that is actually an accessibility issue okay here's the other thing Use your styles. Tell the con tell the computer what it is that that is being used here. This is not normal paragraph. This is the title of the document. Okay. So when I tell the when I give that that style um, tag there, the person using the um, screen reader can tell. Okay, this is the title of the document and I can format it any way I want to. This here, it's numbered, but it's also um, a header. Okay, so I'm going to click this header tag so that it tells the computer that it's a header. I can also number it and I can also make it whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever um, style I want it to be. I don't have to stick with the, the colors and stuff that automatically come in that style, but I do need to tell the computer what it is. Okay, so here's a header. Um, hopefully you get the idea. Okay, here's another thing. Okay, spacing. We really want to use our spacing, our formatting tools for, for um, creating the spacing in the document. So let's go to... Um, Let's see, paragraph, yeah, whoops. Okay, so here, delete, okay. That actually looks pretty good. I've got a space in between this and my paragraph, but if I want it to have more spaces, this is the place where I can do it, okay? Rather than clicking down space, 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 all right? So, and then of course, remembering to save. Dr. If you don't, it, yes. These can all be implemented using um, MLA, APA, and Chicago style formatting, correct? I'm sorry, what's the question? Um, within, like these can be utilized with MLA, APA, and Chicago, Chicago style formatting, right? For like the students and professors? Absolutely, when you need to do your formatting, um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know the exact answer, but I'm sure that you can set up a style so that it's you're not spacing the whole time. It's a tab and kind of a thing. But let me make make a note of that, and I'll set, definitely send out. Um, if anybody else knows the answer to that question, 
That'd be great. Um, but you. what? Yeah, whatever style I need to set up, and I'm going to write it out here so that I make sure, because that's a really important question. And plus, you don't want to have to write all those silly tab over things, right? <laughs> Nightmare. Um, there are there are some online tools for that will specifically format your citations for you, and um, they're fabulous. And it saved my life when I was in when I was doing my master's degree. Oh, I forgot to share this one thing. If you don't know about this, this is a fabulous thing. Okay, so I've got my headers. If I keep making these things headers, this is fabulous. And okay, Do -do -do. style. Uh, where is it? Heading one. Okay, I'll make this one style. Heading two, and I'm not worrying about the formatting right now. I'm just I have a heading two. Heading two. Okay. And let's make this one. You're going to love this. This is great. Anybody who's done a doctoral dissertation, you're going to love this. OK, heading one. All right, now I've got my headers, my paragraphs in here. Save. OK, now I should be able to make a table of contents in here automatically. Here it is, table of contents. Automatic table, boom, there it is. Okay, because you've got an automatic table of con, well, okay, it did it in the wrong place. Let me go back, put it up here. Okay, table of contents, automatic table, there it is. So look, now I've got an automatic table of contents that leads me to each piece of my document. Is this fabulous or what? And then if I change it, edit the heading at all. All I have to do is uh, refresh it and it changes the table of contents as well. Okay, so whenever this is this is the case for Google Docs and Word, any of these, it also does it in pages on Mac. If you use your um, style guide, if you use your styles, you'll have an automatic table of contents. Okay, so that in itself is a good reason to have come here today. If you didn't know that already, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, um, PowerPoint. Let's check out a PowerPoint. You guys like this? I hope you do. And the thing is, it's not just it's it's good for everybody. Okay, it's not just good for people with disabilities. Good for all of us. Okay, here's a standard PowerPoint. Now, um, okay, so we don't see the accessibility checker. So all I need to do is I'm going to go to file. You don't have to remember this. I'm just demonstrating it. Okay. I'm going to go to file, options, customize ribbon, because um, I'm going to tell it I want another thing added onto this ribbon up here. Instead of popular commands, I'm going to go to all commands. And then down here to Accessibility Checker. And I'm going to click it, and it's going to tell me that I have to create a group. So OK. New group, Accessibility Checker. Hey. New group, there you go. add. OK. And we'll hit OK. New tab, there's my check accessibility right there. Okay, so now I've got this PowerPoint. This is an earlier version of what I was working on with this thing. And I left some of the errors in on purpose so that you can see it. Okay, so it's telling me in this whole PowerPoint presentation, um, again, shape 175, which one is it? Slide four. is missing alternative text. Okay, so I can go back and I can fix 
these errors. Okay, this is missing alt text. No header row specified. Okay, in a table, and these are all, I'm not going to take the whole time to like show you how everything works because it is Googleable, but just to know in a table, you need to specify that there is a header row. Um, and that makes it accessible, okay? Uh, one of the things that we do also want to check is the reading order of the document, especially in PowerPoint, because there's images. It needs to be logical so that if your students um, are reading this PowerPoint or going through the through the PowerPoint, and imagine if you can't see, you're you're waiting for a computer to tell you what you're looking at. So if the thing jumps around and you don't, okay, so let's say here's slide five, and it says I need to check the reading order. Home tab, drawing group, where are you? Arrange, here we go. Order objects, arrange. Bring to front, align, selection pane. Hey, okay. So what usually happens is that these pieces are usually backwards, but I guess maybe I fixed this one. Let me try another one. Okay. Right. So this one, um, it's telling me, I hope you can see it, but what it's doing is checking the readability. We want the computer to read the top line first, the first box. So I need to go back and I need to move, it's calling this shape, this text box here, it's calling it shape 193. So I'm going to move it up. Okay, and I wanted to read this one next. It's calling it shape 194. So I'm going to draw this up. Now I wanted to see the first this whole thing is grouped together. Um, I wanted to see this image first because that's just left to right. Okay, and now this image, and now this image, and now this image. Okay, so now that's checked. And it takes a little bit of work, but I mean, imagine some, if you know somebody who can't see, if you haven't seen um, our sessions with, with Tracy Hill, you know, you really need to go back and take a look. We've got people who are getting their master's degrees and they are blind, okay? It's okay for me to take a couple of extra minutes and make sure my stuff is accessible for her because for crying out loud, <laughs> this is the right thing to do, right? Okay, um, we also wanna talk a little bit about color. Um, look at this. I thought this was pretty and it looked great in Google Slides, but when I created it in Microsoft PowerPoint, yikes, this does not work because how you don't have to be blind. Who's going to be able to see that? So I just really need to use some common sense here and um, format my stuff so that, you know, everybody can read it. One of my favorite things that, or actually one of my pet peeves at church is for crying out loud, we use these giant PowerPoints for people to read the music, and it's beautiful and everything, but I don't have vision problems, and I can't read the words because they blend into the background. All we really need to do in order to fix that is you create this text box, home, um, style, let's see, design, view, format, Okay, you just create your text box and you say, all right, how do we want to fill the shape? I want to fill it with white. And then all of my letters, my words, I'm going to make those, you know, black. Because that's the easiest thing for people to see. Simple. And you can have all the decorations that you want in the back. You see how the, the colors and things are, are around the text there? That's easy to easy to, to read. It just makes the letters stand out, okay? And that's what we're talking about, is just making it 
we want the purpose of being here is for success for our students. We want them to be able to see what we're showing them um, so that they can be as successful as possible. Okay. Now we've got even more wonderful things to share, but again, if you have any questions, um, comments or anything, let's take a minute and make sure you have a chance to do that. Okay. I hope you're liking this. It's pretty exciting stuff. So we did our Microsoft Accessibility Checker. Okay, now I'm going to take you to this wonderful tool that FAU has um, called the Accessible Format Materials Portal. You have, we have to give a shout out to the Student Accessibility Service at, FAF, at FAU. Um, it's fabulous. We just really have a great Student Accessibility Service Department. I'm going to take you to the home page. They've got everything, everything, okay? Anything you ever want to know, it's here. And it's, they're so, so helpful. There's tons of brochures here for specific um, disabilities or conditions. And you see how they have just really plain text because they know that the people who are using it are using screen readers and they want to be able to make sure that everybody has access to that information. And yeah, there is a time for things to be pretty, but there's also a time for things to be accessible. Really important. You can, we can do both. Okay, also here's a faculty guide. Very, very helpful. And they do have things like, um, Here's a statement regarding students with disabilities that you can put, you can copy and paste it onto your syllabus. Uh, very helpful. And they tell you how to maintain confidentiality, how to, how to be an informed instructor. Okay. Now, here's the accessibility format materials portal. This is very cool. Let's say I want to make my PowerPoint accessible, more accessible. So I can just choose it from my um, resources. Let me desktop. Here's my accessibility. Okay, chosen and upload. And let's see. Maybe because it already did it. Let's try it again. Okay, so that's not working for some reason. It did work this afternoon. When I did it this morning, it took three minutes. It asked me, did I want it in a PDF format? Do I want an HTML, anything like that? And so I chose the PDF and it did come up. And what I found was um, it looked great but you do have to, whoops. You do have to format all of these things first. It's not going to fix your alt text. It's not going to fix, um, you know, your linking to descriptive words and stuff. You have to put those things in first, and then it will take whatever you have and put it into another format PDF or HTML, um, text only, that kind of a thing. Super, it's a great, great tool. Uh, when I've shared it with other people in our community of practice, they're kind of jealous because um, FAU has it for free. Students can use it. That's another thing we might want to do is start thinking about if I'm giving my students um, a project to do, why not make one of the things that they need, one of the criteria, hey, make it accessible because this is a skill that they need to learn as they move out into the workforce. And besides, again, it's just the right thing to do, okay? Uh, we've, re we've looked at the Canvas Accessibility Checker, and there's also the FAU Assistive Technology Resource Center um, tools. Personally, I don't have experience with um, how does the, the these different tools w work, okay? But JAWS, Natural Reader, all of these things, closed captioning TV, there's all kinds of stuff here. 
if you want to take the time to learn about it, if you want to take the time to go down and see what it does and how it does it, if you have a student that you want to make sure that they get a chance and, you know, they're so excited when faculty want to come down and um, get involved in this. Okay, so we highly encourage you to go ahead and do that. Okay. All righty. I hope you're excited about this because I just, I really am. Um, I think it's such a great time to be a teacher, especially an online teacher because, wow, this is all so, it's just really, really neat. Okay. Um, we've got some excellent resources here, um, which I will share with you. WebAIM, this is one of the friendliest uh, websites that I've seen. Um, how to make your, your online content accessible. Um, pretty much any question that you, that you would have here, really good stuff. Lots of resources, um, certainly a community too. Um, this is the link to the Web Accessibility Initiative. Again, great, great stuff. Tutorials and presentations, I love this. There's a before and after demonstration here that shows you, if you want examples, okay, what are you talking about? What's bad, what's good? Um, this is a, a website, okay? So the inaccessibility homepage, all right, the in inaccessible homepage. So for here, it tells you the text alternative for this image of text is overly verbose and does not serve the equivalent purpose of the image, okay? Um, so they also tell you how to fix it. Okay, the text alternative for this image of text contains the words that are displayed in the image. And that's what makes it accessible. So it's great. There's a really good hand, a lot of really good hands-on stuff here. Um, and I see we're starting, oh, we're out of time. I'm gonna share these things with you, but before we go, I really wanna make sure that you get this information. Um, coming soon, next week, we'll have course building through alignment. And then on February 19th, our um, library librarians are gonna come back and talk to us too. But really, also really exciting, we've got uh, the third annual Excellence in E-Learning Awards coming up. Um, there's a, um, sizable stipend for the winners and it's also just a really great way to celebrate online instruction and leadership at FAU. So please be looking for the announcements of how to nominate and how to um, you can nominate yourself that's totally fine. We're going to share that with you how to do that um, and we also really want to promote the teaching with technology showcase that's coming up on April 20th. If you have not enrolled for that, if you've not thought about um, presenting there, Teach with Technology Showcase. If you haven't thought about um, going or presenting there, I would really encourage you to do that. It's not too late. The proposal submission is due date is Wednesday, February 28th. If you need help with it, trying to think about hmm, what should I what should I do, it's going to be a wonderful time, uh, sponsored by the Center Free Learning as well as the Office of Information Technology. So, kind of before we go, does anybody have anything you want to shout out or questions or anything? Um, if you do, or if you don't, if you still want, I'll I'll be sending you a follow up with information today. If you have any um, questions or anything, please feel free to. Send them on, send them on over, and we thank you for joining us today. Your time is the most valuable thing that you have, and we appreciate you spending it with us today. Take care.